Hello, today we get to continue reading in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 14, starting with verse 47. When Saul had taken the kingship over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the Ammonites, against Edom, against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he was, he routed them, and he did valiantly and struck the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of those who plundered them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malkishua, and the names of his two daughters were Merab, the name of his younger was Michael, and the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimeaz, and the name of of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner was the father of Abner, was the uh, Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. There was hard fighting against the Philistines all the days of Saul, and when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he attached him to himself. Now we switch over to First Chronicles. In Gibeon, chapter 9, verse 35 through 44, in Gibeon lived the father of Gibeon, Jael, and the name of his wife was Maka, and his firstborn son, Abdon, then Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, and Gador, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. And Mikloth was the father of Shimeam, and these also lived opposite their kinsmen in Jerusalem with their kinsmen. Ner fathered Kish, Kish fathered Saul, Saul fathered Jonathan, Malki, Shua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. And the son of Jonathan was Merib Baal, Merib Baal fathered Micah. The sons of Micah, Pithon, Melech, Teriah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz fathered Jara, and Jara fathered Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. And Zimri fathered Moza, Moza fathered Binia, and Rephiah was his son, El Elis Elisa his son, Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these are their names, Az Azrikam, Bocheru, Ishmael, Sheriah, Obadiah, Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Okay, back to 1 Samuel chapter 15. And Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people, Israel. Now, therefore, listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I have noted that Amalek did, Amalek did to Israel in opposing them on the way when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and devote to destruction all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Teleam. 200,000 men on foot, 2,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley. Then Saul said to the Kenites, Go, depart, go down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and devoted to destruction all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen of the fatted calves and lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless, they devoted to destruction. The word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And Samuel was angry and he cried to the Lord all night. And Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning and it was told Samuel, Saul came to Carmel and behold, he set up a monument for himself and turned and passed on and went down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul and Saul said to him, blessed be you to the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen that I hear? Saul said, They have fought them. <laughs> they have fought them. 
excuse me, let's try that one again. They have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen and sacrificed to the Lord your God and the rest we have devoted to destruction. Then Samuel said to Saul, stop, I will tell you what the Lord said to me this night. And he said to him, speak. And Samuel said, though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel and the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go devote to destruction the sinners, the Amalekites and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you pounce on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? And Samuel, Saul said to Samuel, I have, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I have devoted the Amalekites to destruction. But the people took the spoil, sheep and oxen, the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Ooh, ooh. They changed tenses right there. It's no longer the Lord my God. Um, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great has the Lord as great delight in burnt up? Okay, it's it's a strange <laughs> sentence structure, but here we go. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Samuel said to, I'm sorry, Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may bow before the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you for you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul seized the skirt of his robe and it tore. Wow. And Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or have regret for he is not a man that he should have regret. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may bow before the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul and Saul bowed before the Lord. Then Samuel said, bring here to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag came to meet him cheerfully. Agag said, surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hacked Agag to pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Chapter 16, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. 
When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servants said to him, Behold now, a harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the lyre. And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it and you will be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, Bethlehemite, yeah, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David your son, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey, laden with bread and skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by David his son to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service, and Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the harmful spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. Wow. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> it's fun how God, God just makes it all work out. <laughs> David didn't have to do anything to promote himself. He didn't even know, well, he didn't even seem to know it was coming. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I love that. It's a great, great testimony of God's faithfulness of raising up kings and honoring people who deserve to be honored when they wait on him. So thank you again for joining me as we read the Bible daily. I love you so much. I'll see you tomorrow.